I'll just announce uh, representatives, uh, Lupus, Barreo, Bush, uh, Fabricio, Rizzo, and then senators. I saw Manny Diaz. I did not see Eliana Garcia or Anna Maria, but if they're here, I want to welcome them as well. Miami-Dade Fire Chief Alan Kaminsky, thank you. Uh, City of Miami Fire Chief uh, uh, Joseph Zaralban, thank you. And then members of two of Florida's urban search and rescue teams, Task Force One and Task Force Two. So we uh, last, at the beginning of this year, when we were looking uh, what we wanted to do in the budget for the legislative session, had a lot of initiatives. One of them is we want to do something to say thank you to our first responders, the f fire, law enforcement, EMTs, who uh, you know put, the, put it on the line for the rest of us, and particularly as we've seen some like law enforcement not always being treated well, we wanted to show Florida stands with you. We appreciate what you're doing, and we proposed as part of our package $1,000 bonuses for every police law enforcement and EMT in the state of Florida. And so we were able to get that, the legislature to approve it. Um, you know how these things work, there's bureaucracy to get everything done. So we're now in a position where we finally be able to deliver checks to people uh, to say thank you. And this was the right thing to do anyways, uh, but I think in, in the legislature probably, I guess probably passed it the beginning of May, the end of April, and I signed the budget sometime in June. Uh, and it was the right thing to do. But then, of course, we saw here in Surfside, uh, towards the end of June, uh, the tragic collapse of Champlain Towers South and how the folks in this room were there from the beginning, uh, saving lives, helping, and then, of course, looking through all that terrible wreckage to try to find people in the many, many days after. It was a very, very um, emotional time for, for a lot of people involved, obviously the families, yeah, there's tragedy in life, it's terrible, but you just don't think a, a building collapses in the middle of the night without something happening. So I think there was a shock that the families had, um, and then just not knowing for sure. I mean, because it was a terrible collapse, but you know, you hope that there would be a lot of people that would be able to be found as the days went on. So that was really agonizing, and I know the, the men and women who were on that pile uh, you know that was the the mission, and and you guys just would not would not get off that. Uh, you wanted to be there. Um, it was really part of part of your hearts, and uh, you were doing all you can um, to to stand with those families. So, uh, and I know how tough because I was here. You know, I I was here every day for those first couple weeks, and and I know how hard people worked. I know how hard, particularly Task Force One and Two worked. I mean, we were fortunate that as the days went on, we started to get some other folks in Florida to come down. We even got some folks from other states to come down, which, which we really appreciated it. But make no mistake, the folks in this room, you know, they carried a very, very heavy load. So we thank you for doing that. And uh, we want to recognize you today uh, for, for your service. Um, this whole incident in Surfside was a, a, a big, big gut punch to so many of our communities in Florida. Um, the, the folks who who lived in that tower who were uh, the, who passed away but even the folks that you guys rescued that's a traumatic experience too that they're gonna have to live with the rest of their lives but the folks that we lost um, just a remarkable group of people some of these best families you've ever seen with so many people and I think they've had such a such an Im impressive influence that um, you know it hurts and, and it's something that's gonna that's gonna leave a mark in this community for a long long time um, but as tough as that was I think the fact that those families can look and say uh, you guys were there you did everything you could I remember after I remember being in there. I mean, I know, um, Ray, you would have to brief the families. And I remember after 20, 40, 48 hours or so, you know, they just, they, they, they thought that they would be getting better news. And there was a lot of frustration. And they, and, and some of them asked me, well, why don't you let the Israelis come in or whatever? And I was like, look, you know, they're doing everything. But then, so we did do that. And Israelis, they're very good at this. They went, they looked, they told the families, you know what, they've done everything we would have done. They've done everything right. Uh, they're getting the job done. And so that made the families, I think, feel, feel very good. But I think now people look back and they know that there were no, uh, uh, no punches pulled on this. This was a full throttle effort. 
everything that could have been done was done and that was obviously at risk to many uh, of your uh, health and safety in this room. So, so we thank you for doing that, and we think that what we're doing today, we had planned on doing this anyway. I mean, obviously, we had passed it. I had signed it. You were going to get it anyways, um, and you deserved it. And I know many of you, I mean, I remember uh, when we were doing the senior vaccinations, you know, we would do go into, we did over 15,000 where you'd go into the senior's home and offer vaccinations, particularly for very elderly people. And I have people in, in Dade Fire and Rescue that are, that are doing that um, and they're doing that. So there was so much that was done uh, over the last year, year and a half uh, that, that we say thank you. But of course here in Surfside, uh, this was a, a, a absolutely uh, tragic event and something that's gonna leave a, leave a mark on our state for, for a long, long time. But thank you. We're here to say thank you. I think the legislature uh, doing this, when I proposed it, a lot of people were like, well, you know, I don't know if that's gonna fly. They answered the call, they did it. Uh, and then here we are, look, you don't get into this business that you guys are in, you know, you're not gonna be a billionaire, we know that. Um, I mean, you're putting yourself out, you have a servant's heart, um, and it's not all about the money, but if we can show some, a token of appreciation like this, we wanna be able to do it. And so we're happy to do that. And. Um, We look forward to handing out these checks. We're going to have a hear from a couple other folks, um, uh, and I always try to speak before the first lady because no. I never want to other follow the around. first lady. No. So other the first around. lady would love to say a few things. No. Well, and, you know, and Governor, I do remember meeting with a lot of the families. It was in this room where we had some of those briefings, and we remember that. But I thought it was just really important, as did the governor, just to come and say thank you, um, and tell you one quick story. So uh, we're very blessed to live in the governor's mansion. And the governor's mansion is about about four or five blocks away from a fire station and we've become very good friends with our firefighter friends um, so we take the kids we walk down there sometimes we bring cookies sometimes we eat them when we get there sometimes we have cookies we get sugar high we come back you know it's a disaster that's another story um, but we go down there to say to say thank you um, and the kids now whenever we hear a siren outside the governor's mansion the kids go those are our firefighter friends to the rescue and they really, I mean, it is so impactful, um, everything that you all have done. And as the governor said, you, may, you really do have a servant's heart. I've had the pleasure and the distinction to sit down with a lot of firefighters to see that, yes, you do have a servant's heart, but a lot of time that comes with an emotional toll that a lot of people do not want to talk about. Um, and it is very hard to sometimes seek help because one of the things that I have learned is that you don't really want to sometimes reach out to somebody who doesn't have that lived experience because you want to be able to relate with somebody who has been in your shoes. So we are working very hard with the Department of Children and Families. We're also working with our legislative partners and uh, federal partners to see what funds are available and to see if there are avenues to be able to devote some of those federal block grants to go towards mental health and emotional help for our first responders. So we're just here. Uh, Madison is very excited because she wants to fist bump every one of you. <laughs> but we all, we all, and Mason would want to be here. It would be a little bit too much. Mamie, 16 months, way too much. But we all wanted to say just thank you and God bless you for your service. Dane Eagle. I'll be brief. I just really wanted to thank the governor and the first lady, the first family really. We got a future governor of Florida here in Madison <laughs> for coming and, and making this a priority. Uh, the governor really prioritized this last legislative session, understanding what you all went through during COVID and uh, especially uh, what you all went through through, uh, through Surfside as well and our legislature for backing that up. So the Department of Economic Opportunity simply helped in facilitating the governor's vision and making sure that you all receive the payments you so uh, earnestly deserve and uh, we look forward to assisting with that. Um, Lieutenant Governor, I believe, is going to read off some names, and as she does, uh, please come up and receive your check from the Governor, and we'll assist with that. But uh, I'll stand aside and just facilitate. Thank you all for what you do. So where, where are we doing this at? Right here? Well, again, thank you so much. I reiterate what, what's been said already. Uh, born and raised in South Florida, I know that we have some of the best in the business, and I think the whole world got to see that on full display during Surfside. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that our thoughts and prayers are with uh, City of Hialeah. They lost one of their firefighters a few days ago, uh, firefighter Crisanto Villa, so we will continue to pray for his family. And with that, I will read off your names, and please come on down and, and grab a check. Well-deserved, and God bless you.